Hi, so welcome at the webinar. What's the problem? It's about a problem discovery workshop. And um, of course, one way to change business context processes and organizations from within is to run a problem discovery workshop prior to a sprint. So, and what do I mean by that? Well, let me ask you some questions. Have you ever worked really hard on a project, you just got a meh, reaction from the management? Or have you ever wondered if the project that you're working on is a good investment of time, money, and energy? Or have you ever designed a fabulous solution for something and then found out that the customers couldn't care less? If you have, awesome, you're at the right webinar. So let's look at a classic design sprint. A classic design sprint, when you do a design sprint, it's normally about five days. You map, you sketch, you decide, prototype, and then you test. So 80% of a classic design sprint is focused on a solution, on focus on solving the problem. But what if it's the wrong problem to solve in the first place? So, and um, I'm assuming that everybody in the room Zoom or live knows what a design sprint is. And if, it, if they don't, it's a problem solving framework to solve big challenges and test new ideas in just five days. So it's a way of working, it's a method. So what if I can tell you that you can make sense of the user's needs, perceptions and expectations. You can also identify and capture stakeholders perspectives and align teams towards a common goal all before a sprint how would you feel if we could validate problems like we validate solutions before building them what if we could always always focus on a problem worth solving so let me introduce myself hi i'm Ye. i'm a designer facilitator and i guide teams to think of great ideas together rapidly and I love good food and I love camping. So after this webinar, you'll know when to do a problem discovery workshop, who to invite, and what the elements are of a discovery workshop. A problem discovery workshop, why does it work? Well, Albert Einstein had this famous quote, so if I had 60 minutes to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes defining it and only five minutes solving it. So if you look at a sprint, where does design sprints live compared to the agile product development cycles? They live before the agile um, product development actually starts. And if you look at a problem discovery session, it comes before a design sprint. So we already saw that design sprints are solution focused. Or in other words, it's a solution for uh, validation process. A problem discovery workshop focuses on finding the right problem to solve. It's a problem validation process. Sometimes um, people also call it a problem framing workshop. So why would you do a problem discovery session? So you make sure that the time, the money and energy you spend on a design sprint is worthwhile. A problem discovery session is helpful when the problem is vague or too broad or too narrow and no alignment exists between all the executive team members. And also unsure where or how to go for a new direction usually for new business or new users. So basically, when you're stuck. So this is actually when you would do a problem discovery session. So let's look at the three steps prior to a problem discovery session. So what are the steps that you need to take? So step one, when to do a design sprint. So a design sprint, when there are different reasons why you would choose to do a design sprint. If you look at this graph, it's mapping co problem complexity uh, against risk. Um, so you could use it to speed up delivery. It's all, um, low in a com uh, problem complexity and low in risk, but you could use it to speed up stuff. So last week I had a short sprint to quickly go into production mode for a newsletter. 
this is a little bit higher on the problem complexity chart uh, uh, graph and the risk and you could use it to validate something like for example new features for an already existing product like a new shopping funnel and lastly new business propositions or a new target audience you see this last one falls in the high problem complexity and high risk quadrant of this graph so this is actually when i would run a problem discovery workshop so you know when to do a design sprint and when uh, the problem discovery sessions are but who to invite i usually ask my point of contact in a company to make a stakeholder map together so we are looking at people, uh, influence versus interest. We actually want to invite the people who has the power or the influence to stop or start a project. So who needs to be in this workshop? So uh, you have groups in pe uh, of people in companies that you monitor or engage as needed. Um, these are maybe HR people or the head of UX. Um, but you also have groups of people in your company that you need to keep satisfied and manage closely. Commonly, these are the CEOs and the VP of products. So the blue groups of people I would definitely invite for my product discovery uh, workshop. So to be clear, we have two different teams. So normally a director or a CEO would not be part of a design sprint. But these are the people you want in a problem discovery session. Because remember, we're asking ourselves who has the power to influence or to stop and start a project. Step three, set the stage. So you want also to brief the team on the outcome and expectations of the problem discovery workshop. So first of all, what are the deliverables? We will find a problem that's worth solving. And we will find a business opportunity that adds value for your user and your business. And lastly, of setting expectations, we will not find a solution in this session. But uh, we will, the output will be a problem statement discovery. Uh, sorry, as problem statement documents. So what are the elements of a problem discovery session? So you did your first step, you know, uh, when you to do a uh, sprint, uh, you know who to invite and you also brief the team on the expectations. So you made it to your first problem discovery workshop. So what does it consist of? There are five elements of a successful problem discovery workshop. One, the current challenge. So what are the ingredients? You need to have a current challenge. That could be something like, how might we make better decisions as a company? What you also do is you define problems and you look into the past. A question might be is, what have we tried? And you also look at the business need. You're going to look into the future and ask yourself, what do we want to achieve? And uh, the fourth element is understanding your customer. So for who is the solution? Uh, for who do you solve a need? What is the solution? Who does it, who does it benefit? So who will benefit from a solution? Who is the proto persona? And the proto persona is like a prototype persona. It's all based on assumptions based on the group that you have in your session. Uh, and you will be, um, and that proto persona, you will uh, test later on to see if it actually holds true. And lastly, with all the elements of that session and you've gone through all the steps, you will write a problem statement together. And that consists of the five W's. So let's look at a problem statement. A problem statement identifies the biggest opportunity. It is short and to the point. It addresses actual problems, no key KPIs or metrics, 
and it looks at the root cause, not just symptoms. So let's see if we can actually see how it works. So you have a who, you have a what, you have a where, and you have a why for the customer, and you have a why a value benefit to your business. So it could look something like this. So the who, help desk staff, what? has the problem that they can't find all customer information. Where? So um, give me some context. When they receive a call from an existing customer. So what is the value? Our solution should enable a single source of truth. Please pay attention to say there is no solution stated. So it doesn't say we need to build an app or we need to build a website or uh, we need to build our HQ um, in the middle of the desert. No, our solutions should enable a single source of truth. And why? And also solve us paying for different software licenses. So again, it identifies the biggest opportunity, short and to the point, no KPI or metrics, and looks at the root cause, not just symptoms. So this, this is problem statement, is your um, guiding statement for your sprints, if you're gonna hold one. So what are the key results that you're gonna take away from, from a problem discovery workshop? Well, this famous uh, journalist, fiction writer, and writing instructor actually said, a problem well stated is a problem half solved because then it gives you real direction on where to go. So a key result would be that you defined and prioritized problems because you wrote a, a problem statement together. You discover and understand target users. So you have the proto persona and you started making a customer journey map. And you also have stakeholder buy-in and alignment on the core opportunity. And that all comes together in a design sprint brief. And like a friend of mine uh, who was saying, so why would you run a problem discovery in the first place if, if does, this doesn't make sense to you? Well, in layman terms, I would say you would cover your ass and mine to make sure that the design sprints actually have results that are real and necessary. So after a problem discovery session, you could ask and answer this question. Is it worth a design sprint? If nay, great. You save a whole lot of time and money. If yay, also great. You need, you have time to take next steps. So which information is still missing? And what are the unknowns you have to solve before you can do a successful sprint? And that leads me to the last slide. What questions do you have for me? That was my presentation about Problem Discovery Workshop. Thank you, Jane. Uh, please switch the and I'll I'll turn on the lights so that at least Jean can also see us. Uh, thank you, Jean, for the for the presentation. Uh, do you have any questions? So problem problem discovery, problem framing, the way it's a, it's maybe a little bit of a kind of a teaser and a kind of bait and switch. We weren't actually talking about the design sprint. We were actually talking about the stuff that you would do before a, before a design sprint. Do you have any questions for Jing? Everybody's shy. Uh, Jing, I, I do have one. So out of the five whys that you have shown us, mm -hmm. which one is the hardest to nail down? Uh, let me see. Because let me, uh, it's the who, the what, the where, the why for the customer, and the why, the benefits to our, our business. Mm -hmm. um, I think the task most of the time, because people are stating it too broad or too narrow or actually too long. Yes. Yeah. Jinx, sorry. There was a, there is a technical problem. Oh, okay. You can't hmm? see me anymore. Okay, I can see that Jing is speaking. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm back. 
Hi yeah, guys, can, you can you can you repeat? So you were saying, and the hardest one is, and then it oh, got sipped. Oh, oh yeah, that that was a, uh, a, a hook trailer. I think the hardest one to actually formulate is the what. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the issue at hand? So whenever I start with a problem discovery session, I ask people, all the people, the senior leaders in the room, to state what they think the problem is. And I swear, if there are five people in the room, I get five oh. different answers. And most times, some of the times, they even uh, will answer multiple, think multiple problems to, to uh, hand in. So um, the big key advantage of running a problem discovery session with all the people live in the same space is that you get alignment. You actually get sorting out. So what do they think the biggest problem is? And get clear about what to solve. So, so you're untangling the chaos uh, that might live in the head or the, the discrepancies that happens when people talk and assume stuff. So the other people think that they've understood it. Mm -hmm. And then the other one goes like, okay, great. This is what we're solving. Well, maybe your other director thinks that's not what we talked about. So, so you will make it in a problem discovery session really, really clear what the focus will be for a sprint if you need one. So, but maybe also out of the outcomes, maybe the answer, no, this is not a big enough problem to solve. That's also a good um, outcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Uh, I just want to say, so for people who have joined us uh, re remotely, please do use the Q&A option and, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that your questions are answered. Uh, you've kind of, you kind of created a vision of the problem for Azijing. So if you have five stakeholders and they cannot agree on what the problem is, what do you do? We know and vote. Uh -huh, and then, you vote. Uh, yes. Well, actually, we you start with, uh, okay, stating the problem, what the general direction is. So you actually ask um, people to write it down. And most of the time, they are similar. So you start grouping and clustering and to see if it's mm -hmm. somewhere similar in the same-ish direction. And that actually is all you need in the beginning, if it's in the same -ish direction. And then you will look at, okay, what kind of, uh, if you look at the same -ish direction, what kind of problems do we have? And uh, how come we haven't solved it yet? And uh, what is, what do we want to go for the business? What is the future direction? And so you have that same-ish direction in the beginning that gives you a direction to go during the day, but it's not going to be exactly the focus because the focus you will state after you did all the exercises and then you come back. Okay, so if you followed all the process during the day and have all the steps done, let's look again at the problem statement. What do you think now it is? So you have time to reframe and get different insights from all the other members to uh, make a problem statement that the whole team aligns and agrees on. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes total sense actually. Yeah. And is there a place for a decision maker on a problem, a problem framing workshop? So they are all stakeholders. Do you assign somebody a role of decision maker or do decisions need to be made in a more democratic way of sorts? In general, I would say uh, all stakeholders should be around the same level of importance. Um, but there still is always one person who is actually a, uh, um, a decider, right? So uh -huh. in, in this case, the example that I gave, that would be a CEO and um, maybe not the head of uh, product. Uh -huh. So if they really, really can't decide, which is rare because... Um, People uh, tend to see the different angles of the perspectives of why they would ch uh, choose a problem or a direction, and they couldn't actually explain why. Mm -hmm. um, the the conversation actually actually will move towards what they all think in the end. So um, they will <laughs> state their point of view, and if it's different, then you will listen to other people, and then they will come into an agreement. She, it's quite rare to have like all different uh, opinions and not have a one problem statement at the end. You could have multiple 
problem statements if you think you know this is not just one problem we have all this but then i would let them vote on prioritizing so which one is the one that we need to focus on first mm -hmm. okay thank you uh do you have a ah, question yes uh yeah and then i'll just need you yeah please do uh mm -hmm. okay okay cool so jing we have one question for a question from the live audience here the first one is are there any specific techniques that you are using during those workshops anything that comes to mind and also can you maybe, maybe give us an example you don't need to mention a client but of a problem framing workshop that that you have done and that you are proudest of so two questions actually two, two questions so yeah. what type of techniques um, yeah so i i already said a little bit of the pros and persona so uh you have like assumption based a user that you're gonna make so you're gonna start with mapping out the customer journey so to, to discover where your assumption is on the biggest pains and solutions that we need, I use a lot of stickers and I use a lot of dot votes and stickies. So no technical fancy stuff actually, it's just a process that you map out. And um, what I'm most proud of is there was this um, diversity and equity and inclusion sprint that I ran and that was about finding a um, helping um, non-binary uh, queer people to sorry no I'm uh, what's the Dutch word that's a slippery slope uh, queer, I know sorry, yeah. for queer uh, people who are uh, neurodivergent to help find health care and um, that was actually quite because they started out really 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 big and uh and so they narrowed down their user target group as to who would most benefit from the solution that they had and it's also um towards a direction and a solution that actually would help this under serviced uh people so i was mm -hmm. really proud of being part of the team to help work towards the solution Mm -hmm. And can you maybe tell us what was the final problem statement for that uh, company or the NGO? From top of your head, of course, I know, I know that you don't know it by oh, heart. Gosh. Or maybe uh, you'll surprise us. did not remember it completely, but it was um, how might we actually help neurodiverse and queer people uh, find a, a mental health care professional that they feel safe with mm -hmm. so somewhere mm -hmm. in that line because we actually found out during the sprint um, that neurodiverse and queer people most of the time have difficulties feeling safe when they talk to a healthcare professional either they <laughs> explain who they are like being queer or even worse defend themselves and also um, being not n neurodiverse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like for okay. instance, we had a user interview with a person, and uh, and she went to a doctor, a new GP, and uh, she told the doctor, the new GP, that she has um, HDID, and the GP actually told her that he doesn't believe in that stuff, and she will over overcome it by herself, and so he just brushed it away while she's um, seeing a psychiatrist and having medication and everything. So um, it's not normal to defend yourself if you are mm -hmm. already in a, in, a, um, in a space that you need to be feeling safe because you are already vulnerable, right? When you go to a, to a doctor or a healthcare per person. So mm -hmm. this is actually uh, an underserved group that, that is really it feels good to be able to use your uh, expertise to help these people. Okay, thank you. Did that answer your question? This monologue of 10 minutes? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just joking, Jing, I'm just joking. Uh, do we have any, any, any more questions in the room? Okay, yeah. Croatian or English, it's your choice. English, yeah, I'll just need to repeat that to Jing, so whatever, it's easier. So when, uh, was the first time she uh, 
had experience with travel discovery workshops and I really intrigued her about it so she would continue to develop herself. Mm -hmm. So you are looking for a, for a problem that she had then she thought, you know, I actually had... For the origin story. Uh, okay, so Jing, uh, let's go. So Jing, what's the, what's the origin story of you being a person who's, who, who practitions problem discovery? How come? What was the, the situation, the project, uh, the workshop that, you, that got you thinking? That is a great question. Well, I don't know if you actually ha ever ha run a sprint and then you actually del had all the solution and deliverables and you were really proud of that and you gave it to your senior manager and you, and you, he put it in a folder and put it in the drawer and said, thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that Are ever you, happens. Okay. And that person is nodding along. Okay, he's yeah. yeah. He's that, he's had the same ex the, the same experience. Yeah, go yeah. on, Jim. Sorry. And that was it. That was it. So you had this whole team spending time, money, energy to do this whole sprint to prep, to prepare, to have the user testers, to have the experts coming in, and then on Monday you you gleefully present your results, and somebody just say thanks, and just put it in a drawer, and nothing ever happens. So that's the reason why uh, for the new business and new users, I won't do a sprint before I do a problem discovery. And uh, I just had a, um, a call recently about doing a sprint and they were saying, oh, no, no, you know, no, our director is too busy. So he won't be able to make it for a, a problem discovery session. I'll have to say, okay, fine that tells me that the sprint also won't be important enough to do. So why do it in the first place? Mm -hmm. And how do clients react to such a stance on your side? And they go like, okay, well, let me talk to my director. Uh -huh. And it goes like, yeah, okay, he does find it important. I'm like, fine, this is the day. And um, invite him gladly and I'll run a problem discovery session for you. And then we decide whether it's worthy of a sprint it's mm -hmm. worthy of the investment of your time and money of your team so that makes sense he, 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 he did came but it was quite a, a tough one because this was a new sort of a issue for this company quite broad really vague and i'm like i don't want it to disappear in a drawer it's 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 not the reason why we i get up out of uh, in the morning mm -hmm. okay cool uh does this answer your question Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. You got it. Yes, thank you, Jing. Uh, one more question, yeah? When preparing for uh, problem discovery, okay. uh, does she always work alone? Or sometimes she works in a team, and if she works in a team, can she give an example of what are the roles in the team mm -hmm. that support? Okay, cool. So, Jing, the, I don't know if you've heard the question. So, the, the question was, when you are preparing for such a workshop, do you work alone? Do you work with a team? And if you do work with a team, which roles does, the, does that team consist of? Ah, great question. Um, I would be the only facilitator because most of the time the, uh, the team in a problem discovery session is quite small. It's about five, six people max. Uh, but I work really closely with the person that actually uh, asked me to do it in the first place because most of the time it's a product owner or a director actually who gave me the assignment, uh, invited me to come and join. And with this person, I will prepare all the stuff. Like, um, we will try to fill in a design sprint brief first. And you will know quite quickly that most of the answers are too vague or can't be answered at all. Um, so, and then we also do a uh, problem discovery, um, sorry, a um, stakeholder mapping. So who are the people that we need to if we talk about this direction of a problem, uh, what are the people that you need to invite? So who are these people? And we're looking at the people who can stop or start a uh, project. So who have the authority to do so? And I will, I will uh, work closely with this product owner or director to make sure that we have all the ingredients, that all the agendas um, are, are met and that we have as much as information or also the unknowns are also clear before you actually start. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that, yeah, 
that answers her question. And uh, you know, we are not doling out the uh, best question award, but I think this group right here should probably probably get one. Uh, do we have any any more questions? Yes. Uh, is it ever happened to you that your team weren't interested in this problem at all? Okay, cool. So Jing, has it ever happened that the team wasn't interested in the problem framing workshop? They wanted to maybe jump straight to the design sprint. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you for that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, it Just does joking. happen. But as I've shown you, there are different reasons why you would do a sprint. So if it's to uh, validate something or speed up delivery, then I would say a problem discovery session is maybe overkill. So if if it's really for a new sort of a business or a new user or um, a new sense of direction that your company needs to go in or your team needs to go in, then it's uh, too big, too vague. Then it's time for a problem discovery session. Mm -hmm. Okay, satisfied with the answer? Yeah. Thumb up. Uh, anybody else has any questions? Okay, this corner, the most active. Okay, let me just check if there are some questions. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so we have one question uh, in the Q&A, Jing. I don't know if you can read it already, so the, it's in the open section. If you can read it out, out loud and then answer it. Yeah, uh, I see a question coming in from Thomas Love. Yeah. Who can have more benefit from implementing and using this framework? Bootstrap startups or large corporations? Uh, that's a good question. And I would actually say both. Uh, but they won't probably, the startup won't hire me because it's way too expensive for a startup to hire and an external design sprint facilitator. But I, sh I would advise teams like this to do it themselves and get a framework uh, that's working for them, ask the right questions for them to make sure that they go through a process to validate the problem before they start building the solutions. And uh, large corporations, uh, well, somebody just said to me this morning, you go like, you know, Ying, you come in and let me write, read the notes what she just said this morning. She goes like, um, I, I helped them through a, a chaos process, a, a chaotic thing because they can't figure it out themselves. They are, they're stuck. And they can't see eye to eye because they have all these directors uh, with their own little silo private country that they're trying to protect sometimes. So I help them prioritize and sort out which things to focus on. So I'm bringing their clarity and, and uh, bringing clarity and helping them prioritize the problems to solve. And the advantages of me coming in into a large corporation to do so is because I'm an in independent and neutral person. So if they can't figure it out themselves, it's sometimes helpful to bring an external facilitator because there's, I have no um, opinion on which direction to go. I mean, that's what they decide. I just guide them on their process and all the knowledge comes from themselves. It's not on me. It's not dependent on me. Okay, I hope this this is an okay answer for Thomas Law, but what you are saying is that both could benefit, but only one could pay you. Yes, <laughs> that's okay, the correct. That's fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> okay, okay, and Thomas Law uh, says thanks. Okay, cool. Uh, I think we can wrap this up if there are no questions. <laughs> one, one more. Okay, the, the most active part of, uh, of the live audience. Yeah, sure, go on. <laughs> Okay, sure. Uh, Jing, what are the resources that you could re recommend? So, either books, ebooks, or I don't know, articles, anything that might come in handy to somebody who's just starting with the problem. Uh, this oh, that's a great question. I'm, uh, I've been trained by the Design Sprint Academy in Berlin, and they've written uh, a couple of Medium articles, and they also have a YouTube video about problem framing. They call it problem framing, and I call it problem discovery because I found that problem framing in the country and expertise of like clients that I work with, they have find framing a very complicated word, uh, especially when you are a non-native uh, English speaker. 
So a discovery session, people get the gist of what I mean with discovering the right problem to solve. So that's the reason why I'm calling it a problem discovery. But you, if you Google on Design Sprint Academy and uh, problem framing, you have YouTube articles and Medium articles uh, that will help you. And you, of course, you can reach out to me. If you get stuck, you go like, you know, okay, what to do next? Uh, drop me a line. Okay, thank you. And uh, I can see the uh, lady who's asked the question, like, nodding along. Yeah, we've uh, got her. Yeah, yeah. She said that we can reach out to her. Okay, you've uh, got the permission now. Cool. Uh, thank you very much, Jing. Thank you. Uh, please, one round of applause. Thank you, Ante. Yeah.